I posted a video yesterday that had some verbal gaps in it. And if you were not following along with the images on the screen, it was definitely going to be misleading. And then on top of that, there was one of the activities, uh, the bounty hunter system that I did not talk about that I did want to add to the video to make it more complete. So without further ado, here's take two. What is Ashes of Creation? Why is it so popular? And why is the PvP aspect so polarizing, although the game isn't even in beta yet? These are some great questions, and to answer the first, Ashes of Creation is a combination theme park slash sandbox style open world MMORPG set in the medieval fantasy world of Vera. It will incorporate the best parts of traditional MMORPGs with innovative sandbox concepts. Why is Ashes of Creation so popular? There's many reasons for that, but if I was to name a few, I would say that the fact that they're putting the MMO back into MMOs, the massively multiplayer. Right now, the, the typical game, if you're lucky, is only going to have shards or servers of one to 2,000 players. Well, they're looking to have between eight to 10,000 players per server. The fact that the world develops as the players interact with the environment is very unique. So as soon as you load into the game and you go to your designated area that you've chosen, the world basically is animals, trees, rocks, water, land. That's it. There's really no buildings or anything else. As you work the area, the, the area will build up over time, which is a really great, cool concept that plays into the sandbox style theme. And then, of course, it's going to have its dungeons and things like that, which will be more of the theme park uh, familiarity that we're used to seeing. Another major aspect of it is the fact that Steven, the creative director for Intrepid Studios, has made a firm stance on the fact that there's going to be no pay to win mechanics at all. And the cash shop is only going to have cosmetics. Uh, there's going to be a monthly subscription fee and that's it. And if you don't want to buy the cosmetics, you don't do it. The last thing, at least it's important to me, because he's been steadfast on this no pay to win, you know, he's basically self-funding this project. And he's seen where the genre has gone over the last 10, 10 years or so, and he's tired of it, just like many of the players are. And the fact that there's somebody out there willing to put their money where their mouth is, is, is really a breath of fresh air. Now let's talk about the PvP system. The main PvP activities you can choose to participate in are the caravan system. The caravan system is comprised of a personal, a mayoral, and the naval. The personal caravan is just simply you transferring resources from one node to the next. The mayoral caravan system is an agreement between two mayors of two separate nodes to agreeing to transfer goods between each other. And then the last one, the naval system, I believe is going to be comprised of both the personal and the marrow. So you're going to be able to transfer your resources across the waters uh, to different nodes with your own ship. And then I believe that the mayors will be able to do the same thing from one node to the next that are across waters. The next activity would be city or castle sieges. You'll be able to take over different castles by capturing the throne. And then the defenders will be able to win by essentially running out the clock because it appears to be in a timed event. There will also be guild wars, which will be structured and handled by the, the guild leadership. There will be an arena. And then finally, there will be duels. Oh, and the bounty hunter system as well. The bounty hunter system is a real cool feature in Ashes of Creations, where players can acquire the bounty hunter title through a quest available to citizens of a military stage four node. Bounty hunters can activate their pathfinding ability to reveal corrupted player locations on their map. Now this will flag the bounty hunter for combat only to corrupted players for a period of one hour from the time of activation. The pathfinding ability can be toggled off or on. It is possible that bounty hunters will be permanently flagged versus corrupted players with the pathfinding ability toggled off. This design will be decided based on testing, so still to be determined. The accuracy of bounty maps is determined by a player's progression in the bounty hunter system. 
Now, corrupted players may kill bounty hunters without acquiring additional corruption score, and the corrupted player's combat penalties do not apply when battling bounty hunters. Now, let's get into the open world PvP, which will be managed by the corruption system. And this is the system that essentially acts like a criminal flagging system. And there are certain states that a player can exist in. There's three. There's a non-combatant, there's combatant, and then there's corrupted. Let's say you are a non-combatant and decided to attack someone. The corruption system will flag you based on the current state of the player you have attacked. So if the player you attacked is a non-combatant or a combatant, you then too will be a combatant. Now, if you decided to attack someone who's already corrupted, you will remain a non-combatant. Now, let's say you are a combatant. The only way you become corrupted at this point is if you kill a non-combatant. Now, if you kill a combatant or a player that's already corrupted, you will remain as a combatant. And I'm assuming that they're going to put some sort of purple icon above your name to indicate to the other players around you what state you're in. If you're just a non-combatant, I don't think there's going to be any icon whatsoever. Now, let's say you're a combatant and you've killed a non-combatant. Well, now you become corrupted. From here on out, whoever you kill, it doesn't matter. You're going to stay corrupted until you've worked off that corruption through XP grinding. So you can XP grind your way from a corrupted player down to a combatant, down to a non-combatant. But the PK value for killing that a non-combatant player will stay with you over the lifetime of that character. Now let's talk about what happens when a player dies. So upon a player's death, they disintegrate into ash. The ashes contain any items lost by the player due to applicable death penalties. And these ash piles are immediately lootable by any player and player flagging is not triggered by looting, which is a little sus. So let's talk about a non-combatant, right? A green player who dies, they suffer normal penalties, which can include experience debt, durability loss, and then dropping a percentage of carried gatherables and processed goods. So the experience debt or negative experience is skill and stat dampening, lower health and mana, lower gear proficiency, reduction in drop rates from monsters, and durability loss. Durability loss is essentially damage taken to a completed item, like a pickaxe or a sword. That sword will take damage and you're gonna to need to use resources to repair it so it'll be at 100% again. When you drop a percentage of carried gatherables and processed goods, this also includes a percentage of the certificates a player was carrying. If a player dies, there will be a period of time before their mule despawns. Other players must kill that player's mule to be able to loot it. If a player's mule dies, its corpse will contain the same percentage of lootable items as the player. Now that we know what happens when a non-combatant or a green player dies, let's talk about what happens to a purple player or a combatant. So essentially the same thing happens to a combatant when they die, except for they take half of the penalties that a non-combatant does. And this is really to encourage open world PvP and not discourage it. That way, if you do choose to fight back you'll actually, and die, you'll actually lose less than if you just stood there and took it. Now, a red or corrupt player suffers penalties at four times the rate of a non-combatant and has a chance to drop any carried or equipped items based on their current corruption score. And this includes dropping weapons and gear. Now, any amount of corruption allows a player to drop equipped items upon their death the higher the corruption, the greater the chances. And those items can be looted by other players. Corrupt players respawn at random locations in the vicinity of their death and not at regular spawn points, whereas non-corrupt players always respawn at the closest active respawn location to their death. And I'll post in the video description below a link to the Ashes of Creation wiki page that covers player corruption and it's also important to note that the game isn't even in alpha 2 yet so some of these systems are subject to change albeit i would expect it to be minor tweaking 
more than major significant changes. So why is the PPP system and Ashes of Creation so controversial? Well, I believe it to be that most players that play MMORPGs like this one expect to have the PVP contained or compartmentalized in a battleground, arena, or some sort of instance like that. But I believe the way the Ashes of Creation corruption system is designed, it should alleviate the concerns for player grieving. Now that you have a better understanding on the various PVP activities you can choose to engage in and how the corruption system works, Hopefully that relieves a lot of stress and anxiety that comes with playing a game that does have open world PvP. And if you like videos like this, consider subscribing to the channel and ring that notification bell. That way you'll be notified when I release my next video. And if you like this video, smash the like button, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts and opinions on how the PvP system is going to work. And if you want to watch this video here with me teasing Asmongold about him flip-flopping on the PvP system and Ashes of Creation. Go ahead and watch that. And until next time, have fun playing whatever game you're playing until Ashes of Creation comes out.